You know, rejoicing is so uh, powerful when it comes to getting forward and progress, being progressive rather and having advancement. When you start rejoicing, it's, it's a level of communication with the Lord that, that shows that you're in maturity. Rejoicing is different from petitioning God. Because petitioning God, you're letting God hear you communicate problems and communicate desires. But in praising God, you're, you're now communicating adoration. You see, there's a difference. What one is about you, petition is about something that you want to see happen. But praise is about giving God what he wants to see happen. So the fastest way to move in the supernatural is, is praise over petition. Rejoicing is a prophetic war cry that the gates of hell hear your rejoicing. So when you start rejoicing, the gates of hell can hear you rejoicing before God. They know in the second heaven, every principality and power know that the war has been won. That's the power of praise. Now, rejoicing has a place that is the foundation of it. And the foundation of rejoicing is hope. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says rejoicing in hope. So when you rejoice, you rejoice inside of hope. Hope is the foundation of your rejoicing, which means that rejoicing, it must be on the foundation of expectation. So what ushers you into proper rejoicing, perpetual rejoicing, powerful rejoicing? It is when expectation is now sitting correctly in your soul. Now, let, if you take a note, write this down. Your soul is successful when it's in celebration towards Christ Jesus. You take a note, write that down. Your soul is successful when it's in celebration towards Christ Jesus. Did you know that every hour, Every hour that you don't, um, you don't praise and rejoice before the Lord, did you know that your soul starts decreasing in charge? It starts decreasing in authority. It starts decreasing in power. Every hour when you're not thanking and rejoicing before God, your soul starts to decrease. Did you know that? Your soul goes downwards when you're not rejoicing before God. So it's important that you start to rejoice before God because when you rejoice before God, you are actually pitting your soul into the charger. So your soul could get to 100%. Without rejoicing, your soul starts declining and declining and going downward. And saints, so what is the mystery of weakness? The mystery of weakness is an uncharged soul. The fact that the word of God said that King Jesus returned in the power of the spirit, that means that everybody, you're not always in the power of the spirit. You leave unknowingly. You, you are not there all the time. So, when you're in rejoicing, you're intentionally returning back to the what? The power of the spirit. Hallelujah. Are you catching this? Ain't this, ain't this, ain't this. Return in the power of the spirit. You're not always in the power of the spirit. Ain't that something? Let it kushkana. And there's to no andili nijo. You're not always in the power of the Spirit. You return to the power of the Spirit when you start rejoicing before the Lord. 
when you start praising the Lord for everything you have. Saints, I'm going to tell you one of my secrets. What I do is I look around. I find stuff to thank the Lord for. I thank the Father for all type of stuff. Saints, you're not really in the spirit until you could dance without no music. If you got to put music on to praise God, you're still not there yet. <laughs> if you got to go get a radio to start praising and worshiping God, you're not there yet. You're not in the spirit yet. You, you still you still in uh, pre-K. No. When, when you when you really a giant in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about when you a giant. If you really want to be a, a elephant in the spirit, you won't need nothing in the natural to help you no more. You could tap into God without any of those instruments, any of those things. But you yourself got to be in the floor of rejoicing and thanksgiving. Romans 12, 12 says you rejoice in hope. So your imagination got to be working if you want to rejoice. Now, I want you to catch this. Rejoicing is a harvest anointing. When you start rejoicing, you are now changing the season that you're in. When you start rejoicing, you're setting yourself free from demonic powers. When you start rejoicing, Whatever affliction you've been going through, whatever your persecution is, is about to end. When you start rejoicing. Joshua is a prophet of God in the Old Testament. He sat underneath Moses, but now he's over the people of Israel. He's leading. They get to their promised land. But what was the major secret to all of their victories over the enemies of God? It was rejoicing. Did you know that rejoicing wasn't only that knocked down the walls of Jericho? It was rejoicing that knocked down the walls of the Philistines and all the other ites that was going against Israel. It was rejoicing. Did you know that when you rejoice, demons hear other audio? Your rejoicing to God is like a bark to spirits. They're not hearing rejoicing like you're rejoicing. They're hearing something else. Imagine when you're rejoicing, the audio is not being interpreted by demon spirits as a sweet sound of, of love and adoration. They're not hearing that. They're hearing something else in their ears. Did you know that when you praise God, demons are hearing something else? They're not hearing hallelujah like you're saying hallelujah. They're, ah, they, they're hearing something else. They're hearing a different angle and an audio that terrifies them. So, so, so when, 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 when Satan is sending you bad tidings, which is bad news and bad reports and all type of stuff and playing with your emotions is to get you out of rejoicing and praising God so that there is no intimidation on their end. They're not intimidated by you. You ain't got no intimidation because they know you're not going to praise God because you're too depressed. They know you're not going to thank God because you ain't got no expectation. They know that you're not going to give God glory because you ain't even dreaming about nothing prophetically coming from heaven to earth. God's heavenly plan manifesting in your life. You're not thinking about it. So they know that. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wow. 
Look at what it says in Proverbs. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 28. Look what it says in verse 12. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. There is great glory. Now, I want you to look at this. There's an emphasis in the text. If we pass clause A and we go forward, look what it's saying right here. There is great glory. Why didn't it just say there is glory? It says there is great glory. Now, let's compare this and let's go all the way to uh, John chapter 14. John chapter 14 is saying the works I do, you'll do also in even greater works. So when you hear Jesus saying you're going to do greater works, it's greater glory. My goodness. Are you catching this? So if it says that when you rejoice, there is great glory, rejoicing connects you to the greater works chamber of creative miracles. My goodness. Multiplication in your life, having increase, having riches, having wealth, having abundance, there's a greater works that's hidden in rejoicing. Are, are you catching this man? Man, listen, I, I'm giving you an apostolic entry. I'm giving you a ticket into dunamis, divine, dangerous, atomic, incredible, unstoppable power and glory. Look what it's saying right here. When you rejoice, there is great glory. This is the same greater glory that Jesus was saying that you're going to operate in. So could it be that many people don't move into the greater glory, the greater works dimension, because they're not rejoicing? Could it be that many people don't move into the depths of the gifts of the spirit? They don't move into the depths of the power of God for healing, the power of God for money. The power of God for wisdom. The power of God for sanctification, disconnection from wrong people. The power of God for focus and loyalty to God's will. Could this be because people are not rejoicing enough? Saints, you got to thank the Lord for everything that you get. You got to thank the Lord for everything that you have. You got to thank the Lord for every meal that you partake of. Every time you drink water, you got to thank the Lord for your footsteps that you could even walk, that you could talk. Do you know that there's some people right now, their kidney not working? Did you know that some people hooked up to a machine? You take for granted that you got hot water, that you could take a shower, that you could take a bath, that you could scrub your skin, that you could have a towel, that you could have eyes to see your towel, that you could brush your teeth, that you could have floss, dental floss, that you could have hearing, that you could hear me talking. You take stuff for granted. You're able to watch me right now on your phone, on your laptop, on your YouTube, on your Facebook. You're able to watch me right now and listening to this broadcast right now. Imagine this is all a gift from God. And when you get out of all of the turmoil and the things that happen day by day and you step back into your original authority, which is just rejoicing before the Lord, when you start praising him, God comes and sits in your praises and God don't want to keep on being bullied by demonic power. God don't want to keep on being in poverty. God don't want to keep on being sick. God don't want to keep on being persecuted. God don't want to keep on losing. God don't want to keep on being distracted. God don't want to keep on being in lust. So when God comes in your situation, he start delivering you from all evil. What the Bible said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. 
Rejoicing gets the Lord to sit in your situation. And if God don't want to see no roaches walking up on the wall, if God don't want to see no rats, no pestilence, no ants, if God don't want to see no small roof, when God is sitting in your situation, he going to change it to what he likes. So if he like high ceilings, blessed be God. High ceilings is what he going to decorate your life to be. If he like driving in a luxury car, that's what your life going to be. If he like wearing a certain necklace, if he like a certain hairstyle, if he like certain jewelry, if he like certain facial ex expression, he going to change everything to what he likes. The Lord can't get inside of your situation if you're sad. Sadness don't produce no miracles. If you're taking notes, write this down. I refuse to be a sad nigga. No, no, I said, I said, take the notes and write it down. You, you need to look at it every now and again. I refuse. I refuse. I'm not weighing on no situation and predicating it. I refuse to be a sad nigga. Sadness will not abide with me. I am an activator of divine happenings. I am an activator of divine results. I am the grace of attraction. All other things are being added unto me. I refuse to be sad. Sadness is not in my DNA. Madness is not in my DNA. I have righteousness. I'm empowered with supernatural power to do everything God's way. I have joy. I'm supernaturally focused on expectation of God's manifestation. Everything that he can do is happening for me. And I'm dwelling on everything that he can do. Everything that he could do, he will do for me in this life, in this time right now. That's why the Bible say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith. See, the faith got a time frame that it needs you to start placing it in. Don't say eventually, I'm going to believe the Lord and this going to happen. No, no, no. Right now I believe and I claim. I believe I receive, my God. I believe, I, I believe that I receive, Maragandos. Dele Jezala, Ali Jonos, Ekele Jones, Onuga, Nestri Levi, Azanai. I believe I receive, and I shall have it. No, 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 no. I believe I receive. I believe, you may not believe, but I believe I receive, so I will receive it. No, no, no. You can claim and collect. So, somebody write me right here on the line. Claim and collect. Claim and collect. Claim and collect. I believe I received. No, no, no. But write me claim and collect. I want you to think about this. I believe that I receive. I shall have it. So I have divine apostolic authority to claim a thing and then collect it. How, how, how do I get it? Angels. Jacob's ladder was a supernatural traveling route of God releasing increase, inheritance, manifestation, miracles, signs and wonders to your life by angelic transportation. Angels of the Lord are bringing to me everything that belongs to me in my inheritance. Jacob's ladder is about claiming and collecting. Jacob had an inheritance. Them angels was ascending. They was going up and descending. They was coming back down. Going up, coming back down. Going up, coming back down. Going up, coming back down. They was traveling. What happened with Daniel? The angel had his answer. The angel said, the day that you called on me, I left. I left heaven. I had the answer. My goodness. What kingdom is this? 
that the answer is released as soon as you voice it. As a matter of fact, what did the Lord teach? He said that the father knows what you have need of before you ask him. My God. So God be looking at stuff before you say, Lord, heal me in my body. God was already looking six months ago and saying, you need some healing. My goodness. Imagine the Lord already had pre-planned what you planning for him to pre-up. <laughs> You, you, he done, he done did it long time ago. He was already there saying, girl, you need to get your hair done. When your hair was looking nice, God was already there six months later saying, girl, you need to get your nails done. God was already there saying, girl, you need to move out of here, man. You need a bigger place, man. You need some nice clothes. God was already there, already prophesying what was supposed to happen. So when, when you recognize and you get quickened and you say, man, I need to get to a bigger place, man. I need my nails done. I need my head. No, God was already there. Saints, even when you recognize you got a problem, you slow. God had already recognized that you had a problem before the problem was even recognizable. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're not hearing what I said, man. I said God already knew that you had a problem before the problem was even recognizable. Before anybody hears that they have cancer from a doctor, God had already planned and said healing is needed for cancer. So when the doctor tell you got cancer and you hear a doctor saying that, the doctor is late. You is late in hearing it. The doctor is late in speaking it. God had already released healing. So when you come into the realm of the spirit and you start rejoicing before God, all you do is start claiming and collecting the healing to remove the cancer. So, so saints, the Lord had already prepared abundance of fish in abundance of loaves. But he takes it and gives thanks and start rejoicing. The fishes and the loaves trans, translates and is transferred by angelic transportation. And it shows up in physical form. They could see the fish. They could eat the fish. They could eat the bread. It shows up. They didn't go to the grocery store. Nobody shopped. This is supernatural. It don't make any natural sense. Where did this? It just appeared. But how did it appear? Because of rejoicing. And rejoicing brought what was already pre-planned. God had already had loaves and bread, bread and fish before they had ever asked for it, before they was ever hungry. So when the rejoicing is going on, what is already there starts showing up there. They could see it now in the physical world. Saints, if you learn to start thanking the Lord for everything, whatever you thank the Lord for is what you're going to have in abundance. Whatever you thank the Lord for is what's going to manifest. Whatever you thank the Lord for is what's going to show up. Whatever you praise God for is what your harvest is going to be. Whatever you praise and celebrate God for is what he's going to give you nonstop. Your life will have overflow of whatever you're rejoicing unto God for. Since you better start rejoicing before the Lord for your health before you hear a bad verdict about your health. Because when you're rejoicing, you are already in the supernatural receiving the healing for something that you're currently hearing about. When you're in the supernatural, you, you better start rejoicing before you hear about a financial problem. Because when you're rejoicing before the financial problem even show up, money already cometh. Debt cancellation angels are already canceling your debts. Angels are already opening a door and providing you into the realm of abundance before you even see the lack. So you better start rejoicing so that you can have a step ahead of the devil. When you rejoice, you are taking the prophetic realm of God where he is already in your solution. He is your solution. He gives your solution and you're bringing it to the earth realm. You're bringing it into the now. You're bringing it into the situation at hand. You better start rejoicing when you don't hear about no attack, when you don't see an enemy, 
so that when the enemy show up, the Bible said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, that they'll come at you in one way, but they'll flee from you in several ways. They'll come at you in one way, but they'll flee from you in seven ways. They'll come at you in one way, they'll flee from you in seven ways. Isaiah said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord shall raise the standard. When the enemy come at you like a flood, I also want to tell you this. The enemy got to flee because you already done operated in the blood. You, you didn't just plead the blood. I, 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 you, 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 you performed the blood. This is another dimension. Not just pleading the blood, but performing the blood. What is that all about? You perform the same lifestyle. Remember, the life is in the blood. You perform the same lifestyle of the blood of Jesus. So, so, so you perform the blood because you overcame temptation. That's what the blood of Jesus is all about. A lifestyle of overcoming temptation. When, when, when you, when you perform the blood, you already sold seed because that's what Jesus did. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. He went around doing good. He was a sower. So, so he was already sowing good seed. So, so when you perform the blood, you walk in forgiveness. You're not harboring no revenge against nobody. You're not trying to get nobody back. Performing the blood is when you are imitators of God as dear children. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. It, it, it's where you're being tempted in all points, but you're not sinning just like Jesus did. It's where you humbling yourself to the death of your cross and you're letting the will of God be done. And saints, I want to tell you this here. When you are operating and rejoicing, you are revoicing what God spoke about you before the foundation of the world. 